Katrina made a big impact in Louisiana. The place pretty well got leveled. But it was not all detrimental. You gotta find a brighter side. And nine months after Katrina was some of the best fishing I ever had. My name's Captain David Iverson. I've been down here now guiding out of Venice for about 13 years full time. I guided here before that part time for a good many years. My entire life I've lived in Louisiana. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge. When I was a young guy, I, I fell in love with fishing right off the bat. The first thing I did when I got a good income was buy me a boat. I actually started guiding when I was in my late 20s. The people that come from out of town that come here for the first time are automatically hooked. They have never fished and seen this many big fish in one spot. And to see what amazes them that we see every day is the reason that this job is, is want to get up every morning. Every day is different. We could have six trips this week and I could go in six different places. That's the beauty of Venice. We've got big redfish all over Louisiana, but not like they do at the mouth of the river. Something about the estuary at the mouth of the river is just perfect for bull reds. And that's what I fish for. Most people that never caught a big redfish go nuts when they hook the first one up. I mean, it blows their mind. The reel starts screaming and they can't do anything about it. And they, they look at me like, what to do? I say, just hold on. It's nothing quite like that. If, if, that, if that doesn't excite you, you need to have your blood pressure checked and your heart ain't pumping. And the majority of fishermen who evolved to a sportsman from, you start out like when I was a kid, I just wanted to catch a fish. I didn't care how I did it. It didn't matter what I did. I wanted to fish to, to catch the fish. Once you become that true sportsman, you don't want to put live bait on. You want to use artificial. Probably my number one attack thing is uh, extreme popper uh, with various, various plastics under it. And I like big plastics. My second favorite is the, is the hoot at spoon. Throw it up in the canes, and if you don't jerk, if you throw it up in the canes, hold your rod and just start reeling, it'll just walk right out of the canes of the grass and drop right on the edge. And quite often that is right when it drops out of that grass is when it gets hit. The keynote to this down here is hardly anybody's not working. People don't just quit working when they turn 55 or 60 here and sit back and, you know, they, they, they work. They, they, they think they need to work and they do work. Been here 56 years. Just started this job about a year and a half ago, you know, and I love it. Love it. Meet a lot of inter interesting people, yeah. you know, and it's fantastic. I lived down here 54 years. I've been here almost two years. We do, we do just about everything there is to do maintenance. Uh, Plumbing, clean fish, blood ice. We even came out with 1,500 pounds a day. At least. At least 1,500 pounds Right. I've been wearing these pumps when I was yeah. seven years old. Cage okay, of Reeboks. <laughs> but yeah, we do wear them. We wear them a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, every day. I got, got mad at my boots. The people you meet all over the world. Yeah. France, yeah. Germany, yeah. England. Yeah. And this is where it's at right now. It's one of the best things that ever happened to the Gulf of Mexico. They lay them over at several hundred feet of water and build these reefs. So you have the entire estuary sitting right there. And a few, few little minor leaks we have, all, most of that oil is going to come up and float. It's not as major a deal as people think. They thought the oil spill was going to be a major disaster, and it hasn't been. Being able to come down here and have a choice of a lot of different types of fishing. There's not that many places in the whole world that you can go have the variety that you have here. That draws a lot of people to us. It's got a reputation. <laughs>